Hello, everyone, and welcome to Homeownership Day. Thank you for taking the time to be curious about vacation rentals today. That's what this session is about. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into the good stuff because I brought a lot to share with you today. So we'll be talking about life's a beach with vacation rentals and just really quick summary of what we'll be going over today. We're going to be talking about benefits of short-term rentals, challenges of short-term rentals, talking about identifying uh, potential vacation rental areas, as well as selecting the right property. Tools to help you uh, kind of differentiate and determine the best rentals out there. Tips for building your team, secrets for screening and accepting guests, and growing your tribe and community. So let's get into it, shall we? Before I go too far, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Angie Weeks, and I wanted to kind of let you know the lens that I'm looking at this stuff through. I'm just gonna highlight a couple of the bullet points here. Mainly, I've been a property owner for 20 years, and I'm an accidental vacation rental owner. I can tell you guys that story some other time, but I don't have time in this presentation. And I'm passionate about helping people get ahead with real estate. All the other letters, numbers, designations, all that stuff is training that I've had throughout the years, but just know that it's uh, to help people with getting ahead in real estate. So that's where I'm coming from today. And let's talk about the benefits really quick of the vacation lifestyle that you get to have. So that's really the biggest benefit, in my opinion, is that vacation lifestyle. But other people also bring up to me that they like the higher income than the long-term rentals. They like customizing and decorating these different vacation rental properties. And they like that it's less wear and tear than a long-term rental. Uh, if you think about it, you guys, when somebody comes to your short-term rental, they're just there usually to go and see what's going on, like go surf, beach, whatever it is. They're not in your house all day long trashing it. They're just sleeping in your bed. So it's a lot less wear and tear, which can be nice. You've got house cleaning and maintenance deductions, which are a benefit, help with mortgage payments, and a flexible calendar, always a good thing. And you're meeting cool people. So I've met some really amazing, inspiring people through the Airbnb platform, and I'm proud to call them friends and clients today. So uh, some of the challenges, though, are creating systems that can be really tough. And I would say that has been our biggest challenge. So that's why I put it in bold there. And another big challenge is finding the right cleaning crew, the right management administration, uh, dealing with the city regulations and the HOA regulations, and sometimes difficult guests and or neighbors. I go to Saddleback Church and we like to call those EGRs, extra grace required. But those are some of the challenges that you're going to run into in this uh, particular type of system here. How do I identify potential vacation rentals? First thing that you want to kind of think about is the climate. Is that particular area going to be conducive to you being able to rent it out all year long? Are you going to have to deal with road closings or, um, you know, certain like uh, hurricane type seasons and things like that that are happening? So definitely uh, not all climate in all areas of the country is the same. So make sure. And a lot of times when you have somewhere that you go on a summer vacation or whatever, then you're not noticing the off season climate. So that's something that you really want to factor in and think about. It's important. Also the access to the freeways in the airport. I got to make sure that people can get to your property and, and, and back home too. Right. So access to grocery and restaurant is important. Tourism in the area is also an important factor and can really help you to boost your rentals and your income. Business and event travel definitely helps you uh, to identify a good vacation rental if that's an area that people travel to for business all the time, really good. And then other good areas are close to military bases or colleges. And actually, uh, just fun fact, all of these things are good to consider when you're buying just a normal investment property too, not just a vacation rental. So. And then let's go into a fun little case study that I have for you guys today, because I figure you just don't want to look at screen uh, too much. So let's go out in the field for a second here and uh, help you kind of with some ideas and thoughts that we had about selecting a vacation rental property. 
So I figured it would be way more fun and easy to kind of show you guys an example of a vacation rental property because I think a lot of people have these expectations that it has to be this big grandiose thing. And uh, this is one of our vacation rentals actually. And you can see it's quite modest. We have plans to take this porch all the way across. Uh, but this property was almost 100 years old right now, but it serves us really great as a vacation rental. So one thing that we were talking about is you wanna look for a neighborhood that's kind of up and coming or one that's near a lot of things. We are very close to Disneyland here and that makes us a wonderful vacation rental. We're also only about 20 minutes from Orange County beaches. So you can see the neighbors next door are kind of fixing up their place. They did some turf and uh, I think I'm just gonna take you guys around like you're actually an Airbnb guest of ours and we'll take a look at the property. So one of the first things that I wanted to kind of bring up is when we bought this property, we were barely qualified and we pretty much got the cheapest detached home in Orange County. So we share a driveway right now. That was one of the challenges that we had to figure out how to kind of work with our neighbors and our guests uh, for this particular scenario. But you can actually park one car right here, which is nice uh, if necessary, if you're just coming by really quick. Uh, my favorite lemon tree. You guys like Meyer lemons? Um, and then one of the other things that we did is it's important to have privacy when you have a, any kind of a vacation rental. So this is the sliding gate where they will park their cars where we park our cars and also have some, you know, private fun time, right? So come on back. And I know this is not glamorous either, you guys, but it is uh, much improved from when we purchased it originally. <laughs> um, one of the things that I love about vacation rentals is you can really put in your flair to it. So this is a, a fountain that was actually from my partner's grandmother's property and we repurposed it and brought it here and put a bunch of succulents in it because uh, it would be money to maintain if we were leaving it as an actual water running fountain. So that's just something. Um, we actually, when we purchased a property, uh, this deck was something that we put on there and I don't know if you guys saw my video a couple years ago when COVID first started, but it wasn't painted or finished or anything. So that was one of our COVID projects to kind of pour paint the deck. Uh, another thing that we do with our per personal vacation rentals is we like a focus on health and wellness and art. So we kind of try to bring all those things together. And again, like it's just one of the things that I enjoy about them instead of selling a property or you got to kind of depersonalize everything like when you're living a vacation rental lifestyle you kind of get to make it more fun so come on let's take a look inside i'll show you what we've got going on um oh before we go all the way inside this is another thing that i'll highlight a little bit later but having a locking door that actually connects with airbnb and serves as like an assistant that you know turns this on for availability gives everybody their own unique code you don't have a key it's great security it's a great assistant so make sure you have something like that um, another thing I'll highlight really quick when we first come in here look at how tight the space is my gosh <laughs> but what we did was rather than having a stacking washer and dryer we uh, bought a washer dryer combo and it was a little bit more money for this but it was well worth it uh, let's see here. So just a normal place where you can cook, clean, gather, play a deck of cards, whatever it is that you want to do. Another thing that we had issues with was a little bit of uh, privacy from the neighbors. So Amazon, $26, those little stick on, what do you call them, rollies. It was a, a fun weekend project that we did here. So Again, we try to incorporate the like kind of artsy feel, but still clean, neat. Um, this property is far from perfect, as you guys will see. Like, and that's something that you want to make sure that you put into your listings. So if your property is really old, like just play that up, play up the historical flair and mention that you know, the floors aren't totally straight or whatever it might be while you're marketing your listing. The more kind of transparent and true you are to what your property is, the more you're going to connect and find those ideal guests 
that don't give you any problems, that come into your space and go, oh my gosh, I love this, it's perfect. And that's really what you want because you don't want any headaches. You don't wanna to try to sell them on something that it's not. Uh, another thing that we I love is this Lily painting. We got this at the float conference. So, you know, I wouldn't be able to keep all this fun stuff around uh, if we didn't have vacation rentals, like we would be popping out of one house. So it's kind of fun to just put it all around. And these are my dolphin end tables that I got in Huntington Beach when I was 18 years old. So they, uh, they don't make the cut for the main house anymore, but I still can't get rid of them. So I love having them in the vacation rental. Um, just coming through here, something that, <laughs> I love that sign too. Um, I think is important is just making sure that you have, we have our bedspreads that are matching and our sheets that are matching because anytime you have a, a property that's a, a tiny home, and this one is, it's only 788 square feet. When you have something like that, you wanna make everything kind of match, match, consistent and things like that. So uh, another thing I wanna bring up is we didn't know it at the time when we bought this property, but it came in very, very convenient to have closet doors like this that lock. And this is actually a walk-in closet here. Um, I'm not gonna open it because some stuff might pop out. <laughs> this is where I clean for you guys, but this is what we used to do when we lived in the property full-time or part-time and we're kind of airbnb it on the weekends and stuff like that. We were just chuck all our stuff in the closet, lock the door, and then put these little hangers on there for them and some suitcase, uh, what do you call them, holders or wraps. Another thing I wanted to bring up is when you have small properties, small rooms, to have the under the bed storage really helps out your house cleaners and things like that so that they can have uh, just that extra inventory available to them. And I, I kind of wanted to just tell you guys that it, this property, we did not plan to Airbnb this. We didn't buy it with that particular notion. Just things kind of happened on an accident. And I guess one of the main reasons why I brought you guys through this property today is just to really let you know and show you an example of a work in progress vacation rental. You don't have to start out being the uh, Hilton Hotel. You can just start out from humble beginnings and really just improve upon things as the years go on. So this particular property, we actually are able to rent it for about $250 a night and that allows us a lot of the income that we need to continue doing the upgrades and things like that. Like we have knob and tube electrical in here. So that's one of the other things that's ha gonna need to be upgraded soon. And our vacation rentals help to finance those upgrades like the gate and the extra cement in the driveway and things like that. So don't be afraid to buy a, a little bit of a fixer upper and uh, you know, like I said, if you do the marketing the right way and just kind of connect with people on an honest level, they'll still rent the property from you. I can tell you this one's pretty much rented almost all the time. Our slowest month is January, which is why I kind of come here in January and we do a little bit of improvement on the property and then it's pretty much booked the rest of the year. But that's something that you guys can start that out too and begin to get some income from vacation rentals and start to live a lifestyle with the residual income. So we'll get on to the good stuff next. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that fun little walkthrough. And after I watched that video, I noticed there were a few things that I forgot to mention about selecting properties that I just think were kind of important. So one is uh, that it was a convenience for us to have a detached garage. And because that when you, especially when you're just starting out and you're kind of living in the property yourself still too, you can put stuff into the detached garage and lock that up when you go. And it's something that doesn't really, you know, get in the way of the guests and things like that. So detached garage is good. If you don't have that option, the guests of course love a direct access attached garage. And then, you know, you might want to have like a locking shed or something outside, out back, wherever. So you can put some of your uh, personal items and things like that. So, 
And then also you want to think about it fitting your particular lifestyle. Like if you're a golfer, you might want to be in a golf course. If you're a skier, you might want to be in a ski in ski out type of a, a, a property. Or if you are a beach bum surfer, you might want to be on the sand. I highly recommend you to go with a property for a vacation rental. That's already something in your wheelhouse, because then you can intelligently speak to things like, you know, the waves during winter time or whatever it might be. Uh, so yeah, definitely think about that, those types of things, as well as the cell phone and Wi-Fi connectivity. That's an important item. And then other like fun things for selecting a property is theming it out. You can talk about like, uh, you know, we, we have mentioned the Disney properties before in Disneyland, and that's something that, uh, you know, you can kind of like just make a Tinkerbell room or make all of your rooms, different Disney characters. And people really love those. Those can rent for higher rates. Uh, people like the haunted properties. So if you're getting a, a haunted historical, you could do something like that. You can make a pet paradise. You can make like, you know, if you're out in the desert, you make alien watching type stuff or whatever theme you might want to do, but that can be really fun. And then themes even go further in if you're getting into like uh, some kind of a unique build. So I don't know those of you guys that follow me on Instagram, we went to uh, our client's property that's the Green Elevator in Stillwater, Minnesota last year. And that was so much fun. It's going to be a great Airbnb. So if you find fun things like that, like the water towers, the lighthouses, the old firehouses, uh, repurpose old churches, any of that stuff, a, a unique type of property is great. Um, but before you go too far, I will just want to talk about the affordability factor here really quick. It is most important when you're selecting the property to make sure that you are comfortable with that mortgage payment. Do not assume that that mortgage payment is going to be paid by the people that are renting your property every month or every weekend or whatever it is. Uh, you want to make sure that you can still absorb those costs and those fees if that becomes necessary or you need to you know move into it or whatever might happen so make sure that you don't just talk with the lender about the amount that you're approved for make sure you that you talk with the lender about the amount that's comfortable for you to pay every month and be able to afford and choose a property wisely around that that is within your budget because nobody's going to have a good time if you get uh, crunched for cash all right, let's talk about some short-term tools for you guys. Uh, one of my favorites is Air DNA. That one will kind of just slice and dice all the different areas. It'll tell you about your competition. It'll tell you different statistics about how many properties are usually like their booking rates for the area. Uh, tell you about you know areas that are good, up and coming, not so good, oversaturated, like all kinds of stuff. That's a really good website. Having the pre-written templates is another huge tool. So you can have a Google Drive folder where you have kind of FAQ answers that you can copy and paste into your Airbnb app, or you can just whatever way that you like to make a template email, definitely do that because you're going to get a lot of the same questions and you want to be able to, you know, just quickly answer those instead of eye rolling and saying, oh my gosh, I answered this for the 32nd time today. And also your YouTube channel, sometimes a video can be worth a thousand words <laughs> because, you know, it, if somebody wants to know how to turn on the jacuzzi, like that's a good video to have, for example. So that's one of the videos that we offer for the Flower Den uh, retreats is, you know, a video about how to turn on the jacuzzi because you don't really want to read about that. And um, so consider using video. Your YouTube channel can be branding for you too. And then also smart smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Those are really helpful. Uh, you get your app alert. If something goes wrong in the house, something goes off, you want to know about that. As well as you want to get the alerts from your exterior cameras or your ring doorbell. Uh, you can put a limit as to the number of guests that are allowed in your property. And those type of cameras outside uh, definitely help with you knowing just what's going on when you might be another state away or another country away or whatever it might be. So, and you guys that did uh, our homeownership day regulars, you know that I am big on automation. My previous session that you can watch on YouTube is the automatic millionaire homeowner. And I talk about automating your mortgage payments, automating your tenant life, automating your maintenance and all that type of thing. So 
The same applies here. We're just taking it to the next level. So now you're automating your locks, like I talked about in the uh, walkthrough video. You're automating your lights, your uh, thermostat, your pool filling device. Oh my gosh, that was such a godsend, the pool filling device and the jacuzzi heaters. So make sure you're doing those automations. And then also let's talk about key players. You've got an admin, somebody that's going to respond to your emails and things like that that are coming through on the app or your website inquiries. You're going to have a house cleaner. Those are really important. Don't just have one house cleaner. Make sure you have two or three that you can call. And it's a really critical thing. If your house cleaner does, I'm sorry, a half-assed job, you're just not going to get good reviews. You're not going to have the experience and your guests aren't going to have the experience that they're looking for. So Quality house cleaner, key, very important. Also the jacuzzi and pool cleaner. We found that those are necessary to have twice a week instead of once a week. Usually in just, you know, you normally live in a house, once a week is good. When you're vacation renting it, once a week, not good enough. So we need that a couple times a week. You want to have a pest control guy that you can call. Somebody finds, you know. A, a rat or a roach or something like you want to be able to not only have somebody that you can call, but also have somebody on a regular program so that you can say, oh my gosh, they were just there last month. I don't know how that little critter got in there, but uh, yes. So regular pest control, important. And a gardener, you want to have everything nice and neat and trim and beautiful because curb appeal is extremely important, even in vacation rentals, especially in vacation rentals and your house manager and your property manager. Uh, you don't necessarily need one of those if you have, let's say like one or two rentals, a lot of times that's you doing that job. But once you get up into the three, four, more than that range, it's a good idea to have someone else on the team that just can handle certain little things while you're, you're handling the other things. Uh, insurance agent is important. Yes, Airbnb has, I believe, a million dollars of insurance coverage, but I still recommend to have your own. It's, you know, don't just depend on other people. Make sure that you cover you. And then a bookkeeper and a CPA, because uh, the money that's coming in, you'll want to kind of slice and dice and see what's coming from what area and what justifies what upgrades. Maybe you need to switch out something, raise prices, you know, whatever it might be. But if you're keeping good track of your numbers, then you know what to do and you can make those necessary changes. Okay. Screening and accepting guests. So you want to definitely like, this is an important thing to think about and it's just setting up those expectations. You want to clearly state in your listing, like any rules that you have about noise and the number of guests and pets and parties, because let me tell you, human nature is to push the limits. So just put it all in there and, but know that not everybody always reads. So it's important sometimes to, to ask about that stuff. And then you want to tune your Airbnb settings to require a confirmed identity. If somebody, it's just my personal opinion, like if they're not even to give Airbnb their driver's license, I just don't feel comfortable with that individual staying in my property. So uh, it's up to you, but that's a recommendation uh, that we do. But that being said, you cannot discriminate, you guys. There's 21 protected classes in the state of California, and you want to make sure that you're not asking anything about discrimination on those levels. Uh, Farah did a great session today. If you are watching this on the rewatch, go and uh, look at the um, avoiding bias and discrimination session, but that's got a lot of good info about discriminating. You are allowed, of course, to verify the purpose for their stay, which I highly recommend. The purpose for their stay is having a party in your house. You're allowed to say no. Um, so, you know, make sure. Speaking of parties, we found that the biggest yellow flag are the locals because they have friends in the area, too many friends in the area sometimes. And if they already live local, like, why do they want your house? 
Sometimes they have a good reason. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> so make sure that you're uh, asking about that and having, you know, just kind of your radar up when you're screening and accepting the guests into your property. Uh, you want to make sure that you're reading the reviews and engaging with any questions before you book these people because you get a ding on the platforms if you accept them and then decide to cancel. Like that's really bad. Do your due diligence on the guest before you book them. And then also you wanna tune your Airbnb settings to have three days advanced booking. We've really found that you get the most like um, just fly by the seat of their pants, like party too loud, up all night, making your neighbors mad, people that decide that they're gonna book your property the same day. So we make them kind of strategically have a three day advanced booking. We think that those people are a little bit more responsible, not so fly by night. Uh, so. That's what we do. But that being said, I book many uh, Airbnb the same night, and I appreciate you guys who are willing to do that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about growing your tribe. So one of the things that we love to do is just, you know, surprise and delight people. And let me give you a few ways that you can, can do that and kind of just impress people. One of them is by offering like special deliveries, not offering it, just do it. Like when they check in, if they're checking in for a month long, then give them a charcuterie. Or another thing that we do is a farm fresh box because we love that health and wellness and you know type of theme and mindset. We have an organic box delivered every week to the property, and our guests always message us and say, "Oh, you have a box that's you know at the property." And we say, "No, that's for you." We had some organic uh, fruit and vegetables delivered, and you can enjoy those and enjoy your stay. So they always like that. You can do branded postcards. Those are a write-off. Branded gift bags. Those are fun. Like uh, at the Santa Ana property here, we've got the orange tree in the back, so we have a little stamp with flower done retreats on the gift bag. Uh, Instagrammable spaces with your hashtag nearby, definitely a good thing to do. Essential oils and the diffuser. People like nice smells. It's a good thing to put in the property. And host trainings or like events that are in line with your theme. So we, you saw the poor painted deck in the back. We do poor painted parties and we kind of teach people how to do that method of painting. It's one of our signatures and, you know, we'll have, uh, you know, in the art studio, Mission Viejo, jewelry making, glass slumping, all kinds of different things that just kind of match the various, you know, themes that we have that are going on in the properties. So when it comes to marketing, you want to maintain your phone number or obtain, sorry, the uh, phone numbers and the emails of your visitors. So don't just trust them to be in the Airbnb database forever. You want to keep your own organized kind of roster role of who came to the property and just having that on file because your previous guests are always going to be interested possibly in booking again. So if times get slow, you can reach out to them through that particular spreadsheet and kind of just see if you can make a match again. And then another way of good marketing is don't just trust the, uh, you know, VRBO and Airbnb to do all the work when it comes to talking about your property, have a website for it, have a blog for it, and put a community guide on that website and blog that will be search engine optimization SEO that people might find you through that and book your particular property. So don't just have your community guide on the Airbnb site only and doing their SEO for them, you know, do a little for yourself. And then the like minded hashtags are a good thing to uh, kind of just go and explore on Instagram and Twitter and things like that. You can make new friends, get new guests that way. Travel, visit some of your guests in their space, and then do videos with the other hosts. You guys can all help each other kind of, you know, just rent and be like, oh, there's a cool property over here. And they'll tell people there's a cool property over there. You guys send each other uh, new guests and things like that, which can be great. So this is a kind of an example of what we did this summer because our properties in California were rented. We went to Michigan all summer long and we built a little accessory dwelling unit slash she shed. So there's our team there and we had a good time and, you know, I'm not sure what it'll be you'll, that you're going to be doing when your properties are rented out, but this is just an example of what we did last summer and who knows what will happen next summer. And I'd love to stay connected with you guys and hear about your journey when it comes to vacation rentals or real estate in any way, shape, or form. So these are all the ways that you can connect with me. I 
feel it's such an honor to be here today. And I thank you guys for, again, for your time, for your curiosity, for just looking into this. And I'd love your comments. Please let me know what your goals are. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to uh, Home Ownership Day, and you can catch me on NAWRB vlogs and on the m M&M podcast, a bunch of other places online, but keep me posted about how you're doing out there in vacation rental land, and uh, yeah, good luck to you. God bless. <laughs>